when the parents are at work, there are four contenders for my grandson's attention and affection. The abuela, the maternal grandmother from Chile, and it is not fair because she lives with them, which gives her undue advantage. And then there is Mr. Abuela, who sometimes lives with them and sometimes lives in Venezuela. It's complicated, don't go there. And then somehow when the parents are at work, the nanny always seems to be there too. And then running a very, very distant fourth is me, the paternal grandparent, grandmother, who is up there from Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is where I was living at the time. And I come up about every month to visit my family and my grandson. And I find myself twiddling my thumbs on the couch as the three of them, the Mr. Abu, Mrs. Abu, and the nanny are caring for grandson Owen, feeding him, playing with him, changing his diaper, bathing him, doing everything that you do to gain your grandson's affection, while I sit on that couch with the two dogs in envy and, and fury at what can I do to get into my grandson's life. And then suddenly, out of the blue, I am allotted 15 minutes. I can walk my grandson to the Fort Greene Park and they will meet me in the park in 15 minutes and I am in heaven. I have never been alone with my 12 month old grandson Owen and here we are walking to the park and he has half a bottle of milk and life is golden. <laughs> until we get to the park. He finishes his milk and starts to scream. And I don't mean cry, I mean scream, as if he has been pinpricked in every part of his body. And I begin to panic because Mr. and Mrs. Abu will be arriving any minute now. And so I push him, hoping that the rhythm of the pushchair will calm him down, make him quiet, but it doesn't. And I go up by the flag flagpole, if any of you know Fort Green Park, and sit with the many other nannies that are there taking care of their charges. And I try to undo the harness of the stroller and I cannot get it undone and sweat is beginning to now fall down on the harness and he is still screaming and so I reach in to the push chair. Push chair is English, whatever it is you guys want it. So I, I reach in there above the harness and everything and I whisper in his ear, Owen, if you will just stop crying, I will buy you a Cadillac when you are 18. <laughs> And miraculously, he stops crying. Amazing. And then the cell phone rings, and it's Mr. Abu who says, Donde estas? Now, I have to tell you that they speak no English, and my Spanish is absolutely dreadful. So communication is difficult. And I say, En el monte, cerca del trapo, arriba, arriba which I think roughly translates in Spanish, and, and you can help me here, is to say that I am inside the mountain, and I am close to the drapo, which I think, well, maybe that is the Spanish for flag, because it's the French for flag, so maybe it is. And arriba, arriba seems to be something that you say when you're dancing. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense to poor Mr. Abu, and I think this must have been the first inkling that they had, that maybe there was something wrong with the paternal grand grandmother and that they had better rush there, which they do. They arrive and they have, I think they had bought half of Babies or Us. I mean, they have everything. They've got blankets, they've got balls, they've got toys, they've got juice, they've got snacks, they've got lunch, they've got a hat in case the sun is too strong and they've got a jacket in case the sun isn't out at all. And I had been given half a bottle of milk. <laughs> And so Mrs. Abu reaches into the stroller and flawlessly undoes the harness and takes out Owen. And I see them disappear around the flagpole. One hand is held by Mr. Abu and one held 
by Mrs. Abu, and I sit there fuming again in resentment and envy, and I realize I have got to do something. This cannot go on. I am an equal grandmother, but what can I do? I can't talk to them. I don't speak Spanish. They don't speak English. And so I sit there. And then eventually it is time. Owen is tired and we have to go home. And Mrs. Abu sends Mr. Abu to clean the pacifier. And she is holding Owen, which leaves me with the pushchair and half of Babies Are Us. <laughs> and this was their first tactical mistake. <laughs> Mr. Abu returns with the pacifier. Mrs. Abu puts Owen into the stroller and I will not let go. We get down to the bottom of the monte, and uh, you can see that Mrs. Abu is very upset and says, wouldn't you like uh, Mr. Abu, in Spanish of course, wouldn't you like Mr. Abu to, to push the stroller? And I say, no, 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 uh, because I want to be with my grandson. I am leaving on Tuesday. And what I probably said is, I love Tuesdays. I have no idea, but they look at me as if I am crazy. And then Mr. Abu says, would you like a juice? Oh, no, no, no. Because if I take a juice, I have to take my hand off the stroller. And I am not taking my hand off the stroller. And halfway home to their apartment, or to uh, Owen's apartment, the phone rings. And it is uh, Mrs. Abu's daughter, my daughter-in-law. And I don't even answer the phone. I hand her the ringing, the ringing phone and I say, Tuicha, your daughter. And uh, she has to answer the phone. And Mr. Abu by this time is so freaked by this crazy lady who is white knuckled <laughs> holding the stroller that he stops the traffic. Every single road we come to, he stops the traffic so that we can pass in a strange procession. And um, eventually we get to the apartment and I feel I have won, I have won. And it may seem like a Pyrrhic victory, one which they probably were totally unaware of that there even was a victory. But after that, things were never quite so bad. And in the telling of the story, I have come to realize that really what we have, Mrs. Abu and me, have something so much in common that is pulling us together. And now we get on quite well. That it is the love of family and the love of our grandson. Thank you.